Welcome to the Real Estate Syndication Show. Whether you are a seasoned investor or building a new real estate business, this is the show for you. Whitney Sewell talks to top experts in the business. Our goal is to help you master real estate syndication. And now your host, Whitney Sewell. The number one reason people struggle to close deals is because they don't have enough money. And that's because they don't have enough passive investors waiting on the sidelines, itching to get in. Is this you? The only way to fix this is to flip the script so that instead of chasing money, money chases you. By flipping the script, other syndicators raise all the money they need in 48 hours or less. How do they do it? They apply the techniques that you'll learn at their virtual Raising Money Summit on October 1st through the 4th. Adam and his team are pulling back the curtains with top syndication experts to share their secrets, systems, processes that empower them to never struggle raising capital ever again. And you can learn this from home while watching online. Are you ready to start learning how to attract millions of dollars for your next real estate deal? Listeners get a special pricing of only $97 by texting Whitney to 55444. That's Whitney to 55444. This is your daily real estate syndication show. I'm your host, Whitney Sewell. Today, our guest is Hachelle Mangel. Thanks for being on the show, Hachelle. Thank you, Whitney. I appreciate it. Michelle came into this industry with absolutely zero background or knowledge. Having a knack for leveraging the use of technology and other resources, he has started a business that is built to scale, providing safe, secure, and affordable housing. Uh, Michelle, welcome to the show. I'm grateful to have you on. Uh, this, this topic is something I love talking about personally, learning about. I've been just doing lots of reading lately, you know, just around, and I, th and I think everybody's trying to learn about how to scale their business, right? Everybody wants to grow and as fast as they can and be as most efficient as possible. And, and there's uh, lots of things that, uh, you know, others have done. And I just uh, go back to, you know, most of the, most things, you know, we're not going to, we're not recreating the wheel here, right? Uh, Absolutely. There's things we can learn from others. And, uh, you know, and so I'm looking forward to just hearing, you know, what you've done to be able to scale and creating this way, uh, creating this way that you, you've built your business to scale uh, and through using technology and different things. So welcome to the show uh, and, and, you know, get us started with a little bit of your background in real estate and, and let's, and let's dive into these systems and, and technology and things you use. Sure. Thanks for having me on again. Um, so I'm born and bred in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, grew up here, did move around cities and countries for, for a few years, um, from Connecticut to Israel to Australia, uh, London, New York. Um, and when I was living in, in New York, really, it was about two and a half years ago. It's really the first I heard even about and began to understand um, about the real estate investing industry. Um, as you mentioned, I had no prior background um, expertise or exposure uh, prior to that in this industry. Um, so it's really about that point when I first heard about it from a friend and how his family was involved, that a couple of light bulbs kind of went off in my brain at that point and I really started to dig in deeper and take some action um, towards that. And that's where I am today. I moved back to Cincinnati, Ohio, where I've chosen to continue to explore and grow my business here. Um, and that's kind of the, uh, the high level overview of where I'm at today. Yeah, no, nice. Well, let's talk about, you know, how you started a business that's built to scale. What does that mean? Uh, and let's dive into that a little bit. Sure. So a business can only scale as much as the systems that are allowing it to, to build around it. Um, so what we've done already from day one is be able to invest in different systems, technology systems, as well as utilizing other people and putting people in place in different positions um, to be able to scale the business. So uh, what I mean is, as if, if you are running the business and you're also operating the business and you're also managing the business on the day-to-day -day basis, you're, you, you know, you're limited by the amount of hours in the day that you have, and it'll really be impossible for you to be able to get out of the rut and get out of the, the nitty gritty of the day-to-day -day management to be able to continue to grow your business. Um, so if someone is looking to be able to be that, the entrepreneur of the business and, and growing it and 
continuing to build their brand, uh, you need to be able to put systems in place, utilize technology that's available and stay on top of the, the latest technology and really building operations around you that you can be able to focus solely on the building of the business. So let's dive in there even more, you know, and how you've done that. Cause it's so crucial. You know, I love how you talked about, you know, like business can only scale per the, you know, like the systems that's been built. And, and then you, you know, you mentioned building operations around you. Um, so you can, you can focus on the most important task, right. Or pro- focus on scaling. So what does that look like? And, and what are some, some specific things you've done to do that? Sure. So I come from a bit of a, a data analytics uh, and business analytics background um, so what I've learned in that process as well is, um, you know, being able to allow the computers to read your data, putting, putting in the, the right instructions for a computer to read data so that you can be able to go in and, and analyze it, um, and visualize it and be able to create, you know, dashboards to right away, be able to see all the information that you need to know about where your business is standing. So, you know, there's this term that people throw around the KPIs. We want to be able to track what our business is doing in an instance that we don't have to spend a lot of time figuring out, okay, where are we today? And in relation to where we were a month ago and a year ago, and where are we going to be in a year from now, we want to be able to see those results in an instance. So by building, you know, the proper tools and allowing us to aggregate all our data, you know, very, very quickly allows us to make decisions very much quicker and allows us to make the right decisions much quicker, knowing exactly where the pain points are in our business and uh, what's our strengths and where we need to invest more. Um, so we try to utilize, and then in terms of operations, we try to utilize as much as we can um, on a day-to-day basis in our operations of automating everything. So every single thing that we do has, has a system, has a procedure. Um, and it's constantly evolving. And we know that the business is constantly evolving as well. But we've taught our team members that whenever they do a task, first of all, they're, they're writing down what the task they did was, and they're documenting exactly the process that they did from A to Z. And this way, that task is now documented and processed. Um, and should we ever need to go back to it again, it's, it's available you know, on our fingertips. Okay. So everything from an operations standpoint is documented. I love how you mentioned like everything we do has a system uh, and everything is documented by the team. Could you, could you elaborate on maybe the software that's used or what that looks like? Like, where is that documented? And, and just so like the listener and myself can think through, uh, you know, how our teams are documenting these things. And if they're not documented, they need to be, uh, you know, I love how you've just hammered that drive, drove that home, uh, but where are they documented? Is that a, is that a Google doc? So the whole team can see it. Is that a specific piece of software? I've seen so many different things that, you know, different types of sheets and different software that will do amazing things with, with an Excel sheet to, to make it, you know, easy to document a process. And sometimes I wonder, oh, wait a minute, you know, how much time is going to be spent learning this new tool when we could just document it in a Google doc and it'd be almost as good and be simple, but I go back and forth about that. So how do you document these things? Sure. So the actual documentation of these processes are just in a Google doc, Google, Google sheets. Um, you know, each task will get a designated sheet. So besides for we've, we've put together a list of, you know, all different tasks that come up on a management basis or an operation standpoint from, from the moment of sourcing a deal through disposition of a deal. So there's a master sheet that we've put together. I um, actually built it up in, 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 a, in a project management software called Asana, which I'm sure many of your listeners are familiar with. Um, and it just go, go, goes through, you know, we were able to subdivide each part of the, of the operations into its own project and then continue to subdivide it into subtasks, everything that comes up on a, on a management basis. And then from that list, we then have connected Google Docs for each task describing the process out in more depth. So it's like a one-liner task in the project management software um, and then a full page, you know, process with, you know, screens if need be and, and charts if need be that go out and describe exactly how things are done and, and the workflow of how to get done this process. Um, we also utilize a, a certain tool, which I found to be phenomenal called Zapier which brings together pretty much any single tool that we will use. It, it, it brings it all together and allows them all to communicate with each other. So there's nothing that's left for us to have to tell 
tell something to do someone, you know? So if, if there's an email that comes in, it's a bill. So it automatically reads it and sends it out to our, you know, accounting department. There's this bill that has to be taken care of and it, it tells them right away. If there's a, a, a lead that comes in from, from Zillow right away, our, our software is going to read it and put it into our CRM that says we have a lead incoming. So any, you know, email that comes in, a phone call that comes in, a bill that comes in, um, if there's a maintenance request that comes in, no matter what is coming in, inflow is right away read, processed, and outputted back to the correct department that needs to take care of it. That's awesome. That saves so much time. How does a Zapier know that it's a bill in your email? Uh, so you can tell it, you can, when you're setting up the, the Zap is what they call it, you can tell it certain keywords to look for. Um, we also utilize a software called Parser which actually goes ahead and reads your emails um, and looks for those codes words and kind of creates a template out of your emails and then can then translate those and tell it exactly what it is. Um, you know, so if we're getting all leads that come in from a Zillow or a Zumper or an apartments.com or any of these websites, the emails that come in are pretty uniform. So you can pretty easily create templates for all these different types of emails um, and it'll translate those emails and, and dictate exactly, you know, which label, it should be labeled to in my Gmail. And based on that, now that it's been put into a certain label, well, I have the zap set up that any email that's in label should go to this department. So if it goes into a leads label, it's going to our leads department, leasing department. If it goes into a, an accounting label, it's going to our accounting department. Nice. Love that. Uh, that's incredible. Uh, tell us some other ways that you've used a, a Zapier, uh, other integrations that have been useful. Um, to do lists and task lists. Um, I always tell all my team members that, you know, we should be operating as if we're not going to be here tomorrow, you know, so there should be nothing that's left in our own heads to do. We need to be able to operate, um, both from a business standpoint, as if we're not going to be here tomorrow, that somebody else can immediately step into our shoes and fill whatever we were doing. And really from a personal standpoint as well, we want our heads to be free with the things that are most important to us, whether it's in business, growing the business, or it's our own personal lives, spending time with our families. I don't want our heads to be preoccupied with our to-do lists. So that's something else that we're very, we harp on very much. Don't leave anything that you have to do in your head. Utilize the tools that we've been, that we've given you, utilize the tools that we have available to make sure that anything that we need to do for the business is written down. It's in our to-do list. It has a, it has a due date. As a description of what needs to be done. So we're not, you know, using up brains on, on to-do lists. Nice. No, I like that thought process. And how have you gotten uh, your, your whole team to think that way? Like, you know, is everybody on board with documenting all these processes? Yeah. So it, it's, uh, it's constant reminding. Absolutely. Uh, but people buy into it pretty quickly because they realize, you know, the benefits that it brings and how much more efficient we can be how much more smooth we can be and how much freer we can be to do the things that we love to do. Um, it does take a lot of reminding and harping and they know they're going to get it from me every single day. Um, they've come to expect it and uh, you know, future team members who will join the team will get the same treatment. Um, but yeah, I mean, so it's when people realize the power of it, it's pretty easy to buy into, but it does take a lot of, uh, you know, reminding and, and harping them on it, you know, document it. You, you've done something today they didn't do yesterday, write it down. Uh, you know, you've done, you have something to do today that, that's not on your to-do list already. Make sure that it's been put in the correct folders, that it's automatically uploading to your project task. Um, so, you know, you know, these things have got to be done. But uh, it's easier to remind people to, to get these processes done and to continue to have to remind yourself to do the tasks, you know? Yeah. So the, the, the beginning time that you spend of teaching how to run through these um, systems end up saving so much time in the long run. What about uh, any other ways that, or any other processes that you've been able to automate that have just taken say a lot of time off your plate, you know, where you, so you can devote on scaling the business or other, other things. What are some other processes that we're probably spending too much time on that you've been able to automate? Um, so I would say another thing is the CRM that we use. Um, and well, what is that? Pipe drive. Um, and we have that set up as well, where in addition to just, um, a pipeline of leads, which I think is its core function. 
um, where you can kind of funnel leads through your, through your pipeline, you know, from when they come in until when you actually sign that lease or make the sale. We've created different pipelines for existing residents, existing tenants, existing customers, um, and based on, it, you know, it, things that they tell us, we can put them in different places of the, of the pipeline, which will then, you know, spit out an email as well, or spit out a, a task for us to do. So if, uh, if somebody has called, you know, with a maintenance issue, you know, and they didn't get to talk to somebody. So right, that's going to put them into, you know, maintenance issue on the pipeline, which sends them an email right away, letting them know, acknowledging that we've received their request, as well as creates a task for our property manager to then go out and reach out to them as well, find out some more details, see if you can troubleshoot, help them out, or, you know, or then have to create a work order. Um, so automating that part of it, of creating, you know, templates for our emails and templates for our tasks that has to be done at each stage based on what we're receiving from our customers as well. So, you know, if they're, if they're having a different issue, um, you know, we have an email for an issue that's nothing to do with maintenance or if there's a, a rental payment issue. So there's, you know, an email that that'll spit back out as well to do with their payments and how to make a payment. Um, so really just trying to create as many templates as we can automate that, you know, recognize that they want to feel acknowledged as well. So we have a policy across the board that all of our residents, no matter what type of touch they've given us, so to speak, we're touching them back within 24 hours, no matter what. Um, doesn't mean that their issue is going to be solved within 24 hours, but at least they've been acknowledged, you know, within 24 hours, they know that somebody is taking care of them. Um, but it becomes so much easier to do that when you don't have to, you know, think about it or remember or go back and find who called, who didn't call. Did I miss a voicemail? Knowing that everything that comes in is automatically being registered and there's a, a task that's being created um, and, a, and a template that's being spit back out makes that process so much easier as well. It allows you to be able to sleep a little better too, knowing that, that there's a process, right? And that people are, are being responded to. Uh, are there any other uh, softwares or tools like that that's helped automate a lot of this that maybe we haven't heard of? Um, I mean, there's a lot out there for sure. And we're always looking for, for more um, and different things and seeing how to put different, different tools together. Those are kind of our core Sure. Softwares. Obviously, we use a property management software, which just keeps all our leases in one spot, keeps our application in one spot. Um, yeah. Makes well, it easy to make let's rental Let's jump payments. into uh, how you've leveraged others then. Uh, you know, that was, that was something you had mentioned. And I just wondered, like, how, you know, how have you done that? Who have you looked for? Who, who, how have you grown that team to be able to, uh, you know, keep these processes going? Sure. So some, someone gave me a great piece of advice when I was first uh, starting the business, which is, make an org chart right now, you know, make a chart of all the different positions that exist within your company. And at that point, you know, I was filling all of them maybe, but at least, you know, put a, put a title, a de short description of that job um, and the name of who's filling that job and make a chart out of it. So you can see, you know, big picture, all the different, you know, all the different tasks that, that I'm involved in and what different pieces are necessary for this business to succeed. Um, and that was really eye-opening as well because I didn't realize how many different positions I was doing. I'm a property manager, I'm an accountant, I'm a bookkeeper, I'm a leasing manager, I'm a maintenance manager, you know, I'm a business development, I'm raising money, I'm reports. Um, you don't even realize it when you're doing the, when you're in the nitty gritty, you just, you're just doing whatever has to be done without even realizing how many different hats you're actually wearing on a day-to-day -day basis. So putting that out on paper was huge for me to realize how different things I was doing. And that allowed me then to start delegating and passing things on and hiring based on this, you know, specific positions that I needed. So the first thing I did was I got an administrative ex uh, executive assistant um, just to, where did you find them? So that's a virtual assistant. I actually, I'll put in a plug here for Adam Adams. Um, he has a, a uh, recruiting company, um, relatively new actually, um, that I bought into and was given great referrals for that he helped from the beginning create, you know, the job descriptions that I needed, what my core values were as a company, what I was looking for in, in, in an assistant. Um, 
and really looked at the per- my own personality, my business's personality, and then based on that, also the, the eventual hires' personalities and seeing who fits best. Um, and through his recruiting, we recruited a an assistant out of the Philippines who has been absolutely great and support, absolutely phenomenal, um, and has really allowed us to continue to, to grow the business. So that was the first hire that we made. Nice. Um, and then from there, we were able to go and, and once we've had all the administrative tasks taken care of and, you know, paperwork is taken care of and, um, and he, you know, he really started at also putting all these pieces in place. So I had a lot of processes that I was doing myself and in my head and writing them down on, on notebooks, but he was able to translate them, put them, you know, into nice tan books and really create you know, a, a full service package for anybody that's going to join the team that they can go, go into a folder and you know, see all the tasks that they're responsible for and all the processes involved. Um, so once we had that all taken care of, we were able to go ahead and continue and, and hiring you know, property manager, maintenance managers. Um, so knowing I, I think where it's a they great belong. Idea. I think, like how you mentioned, like make an org, org chart in the very beginning of your business. It's only gonna grow, right? Exactly. The, more, the more details that you add to your business, the more people that come in, the more things you start to do. Uh, it's, it's neat to have that from the very beginning. I, I wish I had done that in the very beginning, but even now, you know, we're trying to always optimize those, those processes and systems, right? And if you don't have them documented, it's, it's hard to improve them, right? Uh, exactly. You know, are your processes documented in a way that the whole team can see them? Um, you know, and so that, or, or are they like, uh, you know, per person or per their uh, responsibility? Yeah, so uh, my, my administrative assistant, he has all of them. And whenever we bring on somebody new, I, you know, so he just sends the folder that's relevant to them, sends it to them. Um, we also, nice. we, communic- we communicate using Slack. So we have a bunch of different Slack channels that whoever joins a team is joined into their relevant Slack channels. So, you know, the bookkeeping doesn't need to see maintenance and uh, maintenance doesn't necessarily need to see booking, but uh, bookkeeping, but whoever joins a team joins those channels that are relevant to them. Nice. No, that's a great idea. And Slack's another great tool I've heard about. We've used it a little bit, but are, are still learning, you know, uh, maybe you can speak to that quickly before we have to move to a few final questions, but like learning all these different softwares, even Asana, you know, when you first get started can be a little overwhelming, right? But it, but it can start to systemize things and, and, you know, and, and repeating tasks, all those things, it can be so useful. But I think in the beginning, some people, sometimes it's just like, ah, you know, that's, I don't want to learn that new piece of software and have to in- worry about integrating it with uh, Zapier and uh, all these different things. But, you know, how do you do that? How do you make sure you teach the team all these new pieces of software? So the good thing is for our team is that we've put all that in place already. So um, all the integrations are set up for them. You know, the keywords are set up for them. Um, all they need to do is, is execute when it comes across their plate. So, um, and they need to be taught as well, you know, if they need to add a task or, or they need to show, you know, follow up on a task or, or how to create a subtask. Um, so it is something that we do have to teach. Um, but again, the, the, I think the heavy lifting has been done already for them and prepared for them. Now it's just on them to, to buy into it, realize the value that it brings um, and how much more smooth. And I, you know, I brought on team members that really were not familiar with technology at all. And I was very worried that, oh, this is not going to work for them. They're not going to know how to, how to punch in their tasks in Asana and, you know, how to follow up on a work order. Um, but very quickly, it, they, they catch on to it and they realize the value and how, you know, our maintenance manager doesn't need to keep track of 20 different work orders that he has anymore. It's all written down on paper. It's all in, in their task lists, where it's holding, if it's been, you know, because you could be working on six different tasks at the same time. Um, some of it you're half done, some of it you're three quarters complete. Um, this way you don't have to remember where you're up to, wh- which unit you have to go into, which material do you need to buy. It's all there ready for you. So, um, again, it's, it's pretty easy for them to buy into it and realize the value that it brings. Nice. So, Michelle, what's a way you've recently improved your business that we could apply to our business? Um, really digging in and focusing on, on customer service. As I said before that we've, you know, no one gets past 24 hours um, without, without a response. That's something that we're really focusing on lately, continuing to improve our, our, our customer satisfaction, customer service. Um, our residents are our customers and we want them to always feel cared for 
and satisfied. And at the end of the day, that means they stay longer and are happier and we'll tell other people about our communities as well. Um, we're, so we're trying to build that community type of culture in our, in our, uh, in our communities, in our properties. And so really focusing on that and creating even more systems that we know we can get to their issues faster, take care of their problems quicker. And uh, I know that they'll be taken care of no matter what is something that we're really focusing on lately. What's the number one thing that's contributed to your success? Uh, number one would be with the help of God. There's nothing that, uh, that we can do without the help of God. So he's definitely a number one reason for our success. Um, and uh, from, from our side of things, it would be continuing to network. Um, so again, where my focus wants to be on building the business. So all these tools are great for the operations and the management of the business. But in terms of growing the business, it's continuing to network. And um, it has been a little bit more difficult and, and obviously different in the last few months here. Um, but continuing to stay at it and, and networking and meeting new people and staying in touch with old people and our network and need to move those relationships forward has been, has been key to growing the business. How do you like to give back? Um, so I give back here in my community. This is my hometown. Um, so I actually moved back here and, uh, my father has a synagogue locally where, um, I work and volunteer within the community here, um, in Cincinnati. Um, as well as continuing to make obviously the, 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 the work that we do. One of the reasons why I did move back here to Cincinnati is because I really do feel like I'm helping improving communities and improving people's lives. Um, and then, yeah, so tearing here in the local community. Um, and again, we're with, with the help of God is all, where all the success, success comes from. And uh, so continuing to, to allow him to entrust us with, uh, with the job that we do and the success that we bring by giving back to others. Hachel, th thank you so much for just the way you've given back today and being willing to be transparent, share how you have built systems so you can then go scale your business. And, and even thinking that way from the beginning, I love that, making the org chart in the beginning, but even just building the business from the beginning to be able to scale, I think it's just going to put you so much further down the road, you know, six months from now, a year from now, two years from now, you're, you're just going to be improving, improving these processes where a lot of people they wait two years in now they're trying to document processes and it's, it seems more difficult. Right. Um, but, uh, grateful uh, for your time. How can the listeners get in touch with you and learn more about you? Thank you. Um, I try to stay active on LinkedIn. Um, it's probably the best place for, for folks to reach out. It's, uh, my name Heschel Mangel on LinkedIn. And that's been a great tool for networking as well. You know, Adley, to be able to, I think I met you on LinkedIn as well. Um, continuing to meet new people you can see who's out in your area and who's in your industry and, and just reaching out and having a conversation uh, it's a great tool thank you for listening to the real estate syndication show brought to you by lifebridge capital lifebridge capital works with investors nationwide to invest in real estate while also donating 50 percent of its profits to assist parents who are committing to adoption lifebridge capital making a difference one investor and one child at a time Connect online at www.lifebridgecapital.com for free material and videos to further your success.